We'll wait for that to start. <clears throat> okay, welcome everyone to the ALG featured speaker series. Thank you so much for joining us, or if you're watching the recording, thank you for watching. Uh, today we're going to hear from Dr. Mubin at Valdosta State University um, on his uh, physics studio lecture series. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to put them in the chat and we will get them at the end of the presentation. And so if you're ready, you can go ahead. Right, thank you. Um, so are you able to see my screen? Yes, we can. All right, so let me get started. Good to full screen. OK, so uh, thank you for waiting. So this is my um, presentation here. So um, I created a video lecture series for intro physics too. That was in round 18. And um, I'll talk about the different uh, aspects of this project uh, in this talk here. Okay. So as, it been, as uh, uh, Tiffany has introduced me, I'm Shafat Mubin, Assistant mm -hmm. Professor of Physics at Valdosta State University. Okay. And uh, this class is for intro physics two, which is um, physics 11, 12 um, at our institution. Okay. All right, so let me just go over a summary, brief summary of what I did. So this was a continuous improvement grant, a mini grant for developing teaching material for physics 1112. Okay, so I developed a complete set of lecture slides, which includes videos accompanied by audio narrations, and these have been uploaded for public um, access here. Okay, so this is my summary. Now, um, uh, let me start by talking about the motivation for this project here. First was um, the COVID pandemic. So back in 2020, so our classes stopped in spring and um, I had to resort to online classes. And at uh, that period, I started uh, creating slides with video for, uh, to present to my class here. So um, it wasn't always possible to have synchronous meetings there, synchronous classes. So I decided to have video recordings. So that was the beginning of this. I had lecture slides. I recorded them as video with audio there, then uploaded on YouTube for my students. Okay. All right. And as I said earlier, uh, this provides an option for asynchronous lectures. So um, the um, students who are not able to attend synchronously will benefit from it. Okay. Um, another benefit that I can think of is that. Um, if this lecture series are available for uh, no cost, uh, publicly available, it would benefit students uh, who might not have um, access to similar um, lecture material for their classes there. Okay. And um, on the, at the same time, I could think of benefits for the instructor as well. So newer instructors especially would benefit from having these slides and video for preparing for their classes. Okay. So these are a list of motivations I could find. Obviously, the primary one was the, the COVID transition, but other than that, um, these are the motivations um, that, I think, that I think are relevant here. All right, so I have my project in mind, and um, I looked at the resources that I had available. So it turns out that um, I had already had a complete set of PowerPoint slides um, in use. I have been using slides, updating them, um, for the last few years for my uh, physics classes. So I decided to choose these slides as my starting point. I would take the slides, okay, and here's a list of slides um, that I have. So I take the slides here covering different topics, basically the whole semester of topics, and I'll be um, narrating while I present them uh, on screen and recording them, okay? So that's my strategy, and it's de described in more detail in the uh, next slide here, okay? So first, um, I take the existing slides and deliver lectures on full screen on my computer. Okay, And um, in the process to make it more interactive, I'd be using the laser pointers and the pen feature for PowerPoint uh, during lectures, all built into PowerPoint here. And then uh, at the same time, record the lectures, record um, the narrations um, with the animations in, in, uh, included, and then convert to video, then upload to YouTube. Okay. And uh, once everything's ready, I can post the slides with the links embedded on vtext um, for easier sharing. So um, that's our strategy. That's uh, the plan that I have. Now, um, to implement, um, let me look. Let me uh, talk about the tools that, um, that I use, the technology that was relevant here. Okay. So obviously, the first one is PowerPoint. 
I had my slides in PowerPoint, okay? And um, it made sense um, to deliver in PowerPoint as well and record it too, okay? So some of the features in PowerPoint that I found useful. So um, I have a lot of animations in my slides. So um, I have a text or images or information appearing at, uh, in a, a given sequence rather than all together. So that's facilitated by the animations of feature in PowerPoint, okay? And um, here's a um, screenshot from, from PowerPoint showing um, the animation staff, um, just for reference. And then um, uh, PowerPoint allows us to present um, uh, slides uh, in full screen. So exactly what I'm doing right now. Okay. And uh, some of the other features here, the laser pointer that I'm using. So that's also available in PowerPoint and makes it easier to point to information on the slides. Okay. So again, um, we are talking about making um, interactive lectures other than just a plain video. And it helps to have a um, laser pointer pointing to uh, the exact information that I'm talking about that the audio um, refers to. All right, and then uh, one more feature that's helpful is the pen feature. So that allows me to write um, on the screen itself. Okay, so um, again, um, we, uh, we are looking for an interactive lecture. We have information on the slides already, but obviously it helps at times to point out information or write, uh, put additional notes for students. Um, for various reasons. So the pen tool uh, facilitates the, um, uh, this uh, uh, marking up on the slides. Okay. Right, and then um, moving on, the features for recording. So fortunately here, PowerPoint again, offers a feature for recording the slideshows, including um, the uh, laser pointer and the pen, okay, and the, um, the audio that uh, it um, incorporated. Okay. So uh, the screen clipping shows you where to access it, yeah, it's in the um, button that says record slideshow. Okay. And an ad additional benefit of this is that um, the recordings are associated automatically with each slide. Okay. So it's possible to modify the recording uh, for one slide individually and independently from the rest of the slides. So it's something that's useful for our editing um, or uh, modifying uh, or making modifications um, to the content. Okay. Right. And um, I guess suppose the last feature for PowerPoint in the list. PowerPoint uh, presentations, once you have recorded audio and with animations and so on, you can save it directly as an, um, you can save it directly as a video file, okay? So it's, um, if you look at the various options for um, saving PowerPoint outputs, one of them says, uh, well, there are a couple of them that have video formats, okay? And um, here we have um, M uh, MPEG-4, so that's an MP4 format that I have used. So um, a very convenient term for, for recording, um, to converting our, my recordings to video formats here. All right, so now the next item in the list. So the other thing that's helpful is a, a pen-shaped mouse, or I suppose a, a, a more conveniently a tablet with a, a pen in it. So useful for um, writing text on screen, okay? And uh, um, that would be that would go well with the on-screen pen option that I discussed earlier. And the final item is an access to YouTube and vText, where we'll be, I'll be sharing uh, the video created here. So that's a list of uh, the tools that I've used, the technology that I've used. So putting them all together, here is um, a sample of the content that I created. So here um, is a video clip, and uh, let me try to get. Uh, Get it started. So, um, just a sample of um, um, what um, what the process looked like for me creating a um, sample um, video for uh, one of the slides that in my lecture. So you can see the use of the laser pointer, okay, and then uh, a little bit later it was show the um, use of uh, the pen tool and then animations and so on. Okay, and uh, let me just uh, forward a little bit. Um, so, okay, so you can see the pen tool in action here. Okay, and uh, depending on your skill with the tablet or the um, uh, device you're using to write, you can, uh, the let letters can turn out a lot better uh, than with what I have here. All right, then uh, first parping a little bit more. Okay, okay. So you can see my animations here. So I have the equations coming up one at a time and the relevant notes will show up after that as well, like um, here in the box. So very useful for students when they're trying to follow a lecture okay, and uh, 
Uh, it's helpful for the instructor to guide the lecture, to guide the sequence of information. Yeah, um, makes it much easier for students to follow. OK, so this was a sample of my recording. So um, we are talking about um, uh, lectures that are uh, recorded over more than an hour, hour and a half, and sometimes two hours. So once we have finished recording and uh, the, um, uh, everything's ready, so I can uh, uh, convert to video and the video is uploaded to YouTube. All right, and you can see that YouTube features this. Uh, YouTube offers this additional feature here. That's audio transcription. OK, so the audio that I narrated and once it's uploaded to YouTube, YouTube can convert to text automatically. So that saves a lot of work for us, for um, the instructor. Instead of having to um, manually transcribe, we have the automatic transcription option. And uh, uh, of course, um, as you'd expect, this automatic transcription comes with its own problems here, but uh, I'll talk about it later. OK, so and, uh, this picture here tells us, well, shows you how to, um, uh, how my videos were automatically transcribed um, along with the um, um, audio recorded and the features and the uh, pen tool and the laser pointer recorded here. So now for the challenges. So um, first we have the time for rendering the videos. So as I mentioned earlier, each lecture could range from one hour to two hours, sometimes less, sometimes more. And after you have uh, uh, created the lectures, after you have narrated and um, went through the lecture, saved in PowerPoint, you have to convert to video. So this video rendering time could take hours, much longer than the actual video itself. Okay, so um, that's something to keep in mind uh, if you're interested in creating videos uh, using PowerPoint. The rendering time could be significant. Okay, all right. Then uh, another um, uh, occasional problem that I encountered is that the audio narration and the video were sometimes not in sync. So that happened rarely. That happened for some of the slides in a, a lecture, maybe not all, um, for all of them. But nonetheless, something to keep in mind that there is a, a possibility that some of the slides will be um, out of sync um, uh, as far as video and audio are concerned. Okay. And um, the last one, the audio transcription. So YouTube automatically transcribes audio. But uh, uh, it's possible that it will require significant editing to correct the um, transcription the way you want it. Okay, so it could be words that are uh, misinterpreted by YouTube, or words that are added, or um, if you're talking about technical terms, it could be two words or one word um, um, misinterpreted here. So YouTube could could be considering two words to be a single word, or, or consider one word to be two words uh, separately. So things like that. So. The transcription process is automated, sure, and it's helpful, but it does still require manual editing. And um, uh, that's something um, important to keep in mind um, when we are transcribing audio uh, using a, a automated software. OK, so um, these were the challenges that I encountered. And now let's look at the final output. OK, so um, after everything is ready, uh, this is what my YouTube channel looks like. OK. So we have the lectures um, posted on a play, uh, as a playlist um, and then indexed accordingly. I can look at the, um, the length of each lecture here. So it's the ones that are uh, shown are um, uh, more than an hour. Well, one of them is less than that, but others are more than an hour. Some go beyond uh, two hours here. Okay. And okay. So um, we also I, I also uploaded the lectures with the links incorporated on vtext. OK, so that's um, the VTEX for Valdosta State and uh, it's, it's accessible to anybody who has access to VTEX. Yeah. Okay. And here's an example of uh, uh, one of the slides from a lecture. So we can see that we have the topics. We have a reference to the OpenStax textbook um, okay, uh, for, for convenient students. And then we also have this the YouTube link to the appropriate lecture. Okay. All right, so this was the output that I created. And um, uh, more recently, okay, uh, it seems like the, uh, this lecture series has been mentioned in Merlot. So the Merlot is a um, repository of uh, open education uh, content. Okay, so somebody has uploaded my lecture series onto Merlot here. Okay, and um, it has therefore probably has a greater audience at the moment. Okay, okay. so uh, for my final slide here. So for future plans, 
at the moment I'm working on similar lecture series for introductory physics one. OK, so I started with introductory physics two because um, that's what I was teaching when the COVID pandemic broke. But now um, I do have a grant received for introductory physics one and plan to do uh, a similar lecture series uh, with the uh, improvements um, uh, as needed. Okay. And uh, in, afterwards in the future, I'm thinking about um, proceeding to upper level physics classes. Okay. Um, so after, uh, depending on the class that I'm teaching, depending on textbooks and other uh, criteria, I would like to create animated lecture slides that would be helpful for students and for instructors um, when they're teaching or learning um, upper level physics here. So that was my last slide. Thank you. And uh, if anybody has questions, uh, I'd be glad to answer. Thank you so much, Dr. Mubin. Do we have any questions? Uh, uh, yeah. I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank sure. you. Uh, it's really a very uh, a good topic with a lot of information. I have a question. So what kind of a software uh, did you use to edit those videos? Because I mean, I also record my video, but sometimes uh, I realized I made some mistake <laughs> when recording. What kind of software you use to edit those videos? OK, here. Um, so I used PowerPoint to um, record the video um, within PowerPoint here. So um, here, let me just uh, go back. So like on the screen, you can see. Here. So PowerPoint offers this option to record um, the slideshow as a video and then here. So PowerPoint also offers an option to convert the recording, convert the slides with the um, audio and the feed animations as a video feature. So you can see in the screen here again, you can save it as an MP4, so MP4, which is uh, uh, pretty good for what I have seen. So does it answer your question or were you looking for more information? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about if I recorded some wrong, something wrong and didn't uh -huh. realize until I finished recording, I want to go back to maybe oh, okay, I see. cut off a part or add uh -huh. some more part. Do you okay. have, did you, what kind of uh, technology do you use for that? So um, if there's something that needs editing, so um, if I've converted to video, I can go back. Okay, so, um, and um, so an easier way would just be to uh, use PowerPoint because like I said earlier, PowerPoint records the video individually for each slide. So you can just go back to the slide that needs editing and just edit the uh, the um, slide on the slide that you need to edit here only. And it won't change the rest of it. So that's a pretty helpful feature feature that I found. You can make changes to individual slides without changing the rest of the video. OK, thank you very much. Or sure. definitely try. Thank you. <laughs> You're no problem. Great. Do we have any other questions for Dr. Mubin? This was a really great presentation. Um, I didn't even realize that PowerPoint had a pen feature, so um, that's actually uh, really great to know. Yeah, so something I figured, something I found out <laughs> when creating these lectures. If we don't have any other questions, um, I'll give you the opportunity. Did you have anything else you want to add before we end? Uh, well, no, it was a, a great opportunity. Thank you for letting me, let me present. And um, hopefully uh, the information that I presented will be helpful to the ones that are attending and helpful to others as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. This was like I said, this was really great. Um, a lot of really helpful technology information, um, a really cool uh, materials that you've created. Um, I think that they're definitely getting use and and so uh, it'll be great to be able to add this video to your uh, open ALG instance and to our archive of featured speaker presenters. So right. thank you again for no, doing thanks. this presentation. <laughs> yeah, my pleasure.
Okay, I'll go ahead and stop our recording.